Okay, I will go ahead and get started. Some people might be joining a little bit late, but that's okay. Aloha again, everyone. Welcome to a special presentation tonight about where does your wastewater go from your toilets and drains with a big reveal of the new Flush Aware app website demonstrator presented and developed by Travis Liggett. We're all very excited that you're here. I'm Jill Wirt, your MC. I'm a project and research coordinator at Maui Nui Marine Resource Council. Tonight's presentation is part of Maui Nui Marine Resource Council's monthly Know Your Ocean Speaker Series, usually held on the first Wednesday of each month at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Maui Nui Marine Resource Council is celebrating 14 years of working for clean ocean water, healthy coral reefs, and abundant native fish. This monthly series is supported by the County of Maui Office of Climate Change, Resiliency, and Sustainability. A few things before we get going. You'll notice that your microphone is on mute. Please keep it on mute during the presentation to avoid any distractions. And we invite you to submit questions that might come up during the presentation using the questions button on the lower edge of your screen. And we'll leave some time at the end of the presentation to go through and answer some of those. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter. Travis Liggett graduated from University of California at Berkeley with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering with a focus on design in 1998 and from the University of Colorado at Boulder with a Master of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering with a focus on life sciences in 2003. Mr. Liggett worked as an aerospace research engineer to develop functional prototypes of new life science technologies from 2001 to 2010 at BioServe Space Technologies and NASA Ames Research Center. On Maui, Travis has managed algae growth operations at Maui Tropical Algae Farm and served as principal engineer for Water Quality Consulting, Inc., where he performed work on the Maui Ocean Center's 2018 NPDES permit application. Travis founded the Small Business Reef Power LLC in 2018 with the objective of bringing to Maui a natural regenerative reuse wastewater nutrient polishing system called a turf scrubber, growing native Hawaiian stream limu, coupled with native food agroforest irrigation for disposal instead of near shore injection wells. During his presentation, Travis will show how the new Flush Aware app website demonstrator works and will discuss solutions to Maui's wastewater challenges, which he says can be found in the living life support system of the Aina. I'll let Travis take it from here. Thanks again so much for being here and enjoy. Aloha, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. Um, my name's Travis Liggett, as you just heard. And um, yeah, I'm so glad to have you today. Um, this presentation is really the culmination of many decades of work. So I hope that it's worth your time and that you enjoy it. So I'll go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to talk about today is a new app that's in development, and we have so far a website demonstrator so that you can try out the education system yourself. It's called Flush Aware, and it will teach you about the treatment level and destination of your flush in Maui, and also provide actions for activism and improving life downstream. So I'm going to start by taking just a couple minutes to tell you a little bit about my history and what makes me tick. I'm from small town Indiana and I grew up on this beautiful river called the Mississinawa River. And from an early age I had the freedom to just take our rowboat and go up and down the river and do whatever I wanted. I had a really close relationship with the water and um, it was disrupted. I had eczema my whole life but suddenly it got infected and I had to go to school with gauze on my hands because of this infection. And so where we lived in this little hamlet, we had a stream running on our property that goes into a pond and that stream goes right into the river. So when, we, when I got sick, we started to investigate, maybe there's an infection source in the stream that I caught crawdads in all day. So we found that when we put dye in my uncle's toilet across the highway, 
The dye came out in the culvert and went right in the stream. And then we realized that the mobile home park next door had a discharge that was just going in a pipe right into the river. So my fantasy was interrupted by the reality of the situation, which is that we had infected wastewater in all the waterways. And you know, I had a dream to use plants to fix this from an early age. And I had a feeling that something in the space program uh, would, would support that effort. And then in 1985, I visited Maui and I saw the reefs here and I was like, oh my gosh, there's hope. Not every water in the world is degraded. This is like the pinnacle of beauty. The reefs were so beautiful in 1985, so different than what they are now. And um, I decided to devote my life to this. I'm like, this is what I want to do with my life. So I've been to six colleges and universities since then with a couple engineering degrees. And I, in my first chapter at Berkeley, I learned about closed ecological life support systems, which is the idea that on a long space flight, you take the organisms with you that can clean up your waste and provide you with food and resources. So I think Maui needs something like municipal life support for our water. The aim is to create a regenerative environment that can support and maintain human life via agricultural means. And in every closed ecological life support system, you've got plants and plants creating this loop with our water so that our resources, especially water, gets reused over and over. And then I came back to Maui in 1999 thinking I would just have a nice visit, get re-inspired, go back to grad school soon after that. But I found that the reefs had collapsed. I'll never forget getting out of the water at Black Rock, just like a gut punch. And what really bothered me is, if it bothers me, imagine what the locals are thinking to see their reefs degrading like this. So I, I decided to go back to graduate school and study life sciences. Uh, I worked on a greenhouse that goes to the space station. and the greenhouse failed because the nutrient solution dried up and formed a nutrient salt on the seed packs where the seeds were to grow. So that tells us that with extended reuse, we need to get those nutrients down. But some of these solutions relate to the concept that basically the earth is a singular organism. It's one organism and it's a spacecraft and it's alive. And you know these are the same concepts as Aloha Aina that Basically, we're cells in a body. We're technically the brain cells of the aina, and the aina isn't going to heal itself at this point. So we need these concepts of closing loops, creating loops, so our water comes back into the system, and it doesn't just come in one end and go into the reefs. You know, it's amazing, this conceptual water of, of fresh water and salt water interacting along the coastline of Kona shows that these submarine groundwater discharges look a lot like blood vessels. You know, those freshwater discharges are coming out way out in the ocean. So I believe Aloha Aina is that the earth is a living organism. And, you know, the reefs are a part of that body and our, the reefs are in trouble. This is in Ma'alaya where we've had total system collapse. Uh, in 1995, we had 50 to 75% reef cover. In 2005, it was down to 8% and below. And this, the quote from DLNR is total system collapse at Ma'alaya. And that picture is actually from Ma'alaya. So all of this has led me to the idea of what would I have liked to have as a kid? I would like to have known where my wastewater was going and if it were infected. So I had the idea to create this online uh, education tool to teach people about their wastewater. But before I get into the app, I have to take some time to talk about the very dramatic information that I gleaned in researching this uh, project. And a little background, there are three municipal injection well facilities, municipal wastewater recovery facilities in Maui that inject about 10 million gallons per day into near shore injection wells. And this is what an injection well look like, looks like. It's just a hole in the ground with a pipe that goes down a couple hundred feet and it works like a drinking water well in reverse. Your base, it's like a hypodermic needle, needle into the aina injecting this infected wastewater. So many of you know that there was a major legal case that went all the way to the Supreme Court that dictated that the county needs to permit that. We need to analyze how it affects the ecosystem and permit it properly. So here we are kind of in limbo. We know we need to do something about 
the injection wells, but we don't know what yet. So what I found has to do with disinfection and the measure of disinfection with the underground injection control program is fecal coliform. It's an indicator bacteria that tells us whether or not pathogens, harmful microbes from wastewater are present in the effluent. So I'm just gonna walk you through this chart. It says so much. So we'll start with Lahaina. Lahaina had very high fecal coliform until about 2012 when disinfection was started. Uh, in 2012, uh, chlorine disinfection was started, and then in 2015, they got UV disinfection. And since then, all of the injection well discharges in Lahaina have had effectively zero coliform. So that's good. Kihei had all these peaks over the years because they never had disinfection until about 2016 and 2017, where you see that it basically zeroes out. And during this period, Maui New Marine Resource Council engaged in the pollution solution and the county agreed to disinfect the wastewater, but then they stopped in 2017. So then it went way back up. So since 2017, the effluent in Kihei is not disinfected. In, La in Kahului, it was effectively zero except for a couple spikes for 20 years until 2018. And you know what they did? Without any public discourse, they decided to stop chlorine disinfection. So between 2016 and 2017, all three facilities had disinfection. But then they let it go in Kihei in 2017, and they let it go in Kahului in 2018. So this is the collection area in Kihei. This is what an injection well plume looks like. The red and yellow colors designate higher percentages of effluent in groundwater. So look, hypodermic needle going down, the fresh water kind of floats back up and flows into the ocean. And you know where this is centered? Right around Kalama and Cove Park. And you know, we're getting high bacteria counts there. Um, back in September, we had one over the beach action value. Actually, in fact, two out of 18 measurements since September 21 have exceeded the beach action value. So what that's telling us is that at Cove Park, which is in that plume, we're seeing very high indicator bacteria levels. In fact, 11% of the time. So you have about a one out of 10 chance if you go to Cove to be in a, a scenario where the indicator bacteria are above the beach action value, which is designated as dangerous. So here is a very interesting chart. You see where in 2017, the coliform just skyrocketed when they stopped. Well, there's no mystery here. At exactly that same time, the indicator bacteria at Cove Park skyrocketed. In fact, in May of 2018, we have a measurement of greater than 2005, most probable number of infection, for, infection forming units. And it, it's so high that you would have to increase this, the, the height of this plot by seven times. It's off the charts. So since we've stopped disinfection in Kihei, we get these frequent spikes in, in indicator bacteria in these near shore recreation areas. And there's a long list of harmful pathogens that can be found in infected wastewater, such as is injected in Kihei and Kahului. And here's an interesting article about that studied um, community acquired staph infections in Maui. And they found that children and native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders are disproportionately affected by staph infections. So yeah, if you could just sum up the type of people who are really impacted by this, you can just say Moana, young Pacific Islanders. So it's unacceptable. And here we have a, a, an article from December where a DOH employee says, the injected wastewater from Kihei is treated with UV and should not therefore have any live bacteria or, vac or viruses in it. I'm telling you that that's not true. Similarly in Kahului, this is the collection area. Where does it go? Just next to Kanaha Beach Park. And I, I got on the Friends of Kanaha Facebook and they said, you know, what's actually downwind is the harbor. And um, this plot shows areas where Limu on the left have high levels of nitrogen from, wa from wastewater. So this shows the plume where the infected wastewater may be. And sure enough, at Kanaha Beach and at in the Kahului Harbor, we have high bacteria counts. Now the county is planning on investing in this, but not until like 2026. So, and their, their philosophy is, well, we don't need to dis disinfect it until we get 
the piping to take it to reuse. But I would argue that injecting it into near shore recreation areas is more important for disinfection than reuse. Because with reuse, you have all these signs that say, don't, don't touch this water, it's you know, potentially dangerous. But with injection wells, the infected water is just going right into near shore recreation areas. So this shows in fiscal year 2026, they plan on investing a couple million in it. And the costs are about one to 200,000 per year for parts and labor or parts and power. But here's the real, this is the kicker. And this is why I wanted to start with this. Um, I approached Kelly King about writing a law that would require all the effluent to be discharged, to be disinfected that's discharged. And she agreed to do it. And this Friday, it's gonna have a hearing in front of the county council. So I want as many people who showed up for the injection well hearings to show up and argue make a personal case for disinfection of wastewater. So I really wanted to touch on this before I got into the app because this is so urgent. This is like a current matter, a legal matter. It's gonna be a law soon. And this is the link um, to testify. So, now that we have that very urgent matter out of the way, I will uh, dive into Flush Aware. Let's see if I can find. Okay, so this is the landing page of the app. And um, yeah, you start by clicking to learn about your Maui Island dis uh, wastewater disposal method. And it takes you to a place where you can put in your address. And then we'll start with Kihei. So I'll put in the... Uh, National Whale, uh, Humpback Whale Monument, and select Kihei. So it brings you to this little slider and I'll pull up, here's a click so you can bring up the full diagram. So basically the water comes from the rivers and groundwaters of Nawai Eha, which is the uh, Maui's four great waters of West Maui, across central Maui to South Maui, where it goes into the user's home and is used for household activities. It's then conveyed through the sewer system to the Kihei Wailea Municipal Wastewater Reclamation Facility, where it is treated to secondary standards. And I just want to briefly touch on this. Primary and secondary treatment refer to solids removal and dissolved solids removal. So primary treatment is basically like putting the, the raw sewage through a screen to take out the solids. And then the secondary treatment is when the wastewater flows into activated sludge, which is uh, material that's, that consists of uh, bacteria that fix the dissolved solids out of the wastewater into solid form. So we get secondary treatment there. Uh, the majority of it goes to reuse and the minority goes to injection wells. Now here's a, here's a weird one. The reuse water is disinfected, but the injection wells are not. And then it flows into the Pacific Ocean through these seeps in the reef itself. Here, I'll play a video from Kahikili. You can see the dye from the tracer study coming directly out of the reefs. So the groundwater is a direct conveyance from the injection wells, like a pipe into the reef. And so the green dye you see, that, that was a study that was done to prove that the injection wells in Lahaina are connected to the ocean, which was really the fundamental theory that was being tested in the uh, Supreme Court case. So, let's see if I can get back to Flush Aware. So yeah, it goes to the wastewater treatment facility and split between reuse and irrigation. Uh, I don't have time to go into all the details today, but uh, there is a lot of information with a lot of links about drinking water sources, which don't correlate directly to disposal methods, but you can spend some time in all these links and learning about your drinking water source. And here's a ta uh, tabulation of the, the uh, split of the wastewater. And this is using April 2020 data. So this data tells us what is attributable to residents because that was peak lockdown and there was essentially zero tourism. So this tells us that uh, the majority of the, the wastewater attributable to residents goes to reuse, but all of the wastewater attributable to visitors goes to injection wells. And I can say that because when we bring the visitors back in, the injection well discharge goes up. 
So um, that's that. You can also see areas of irrigation reuse and future reuse in Kihei. Oh, sorry, I have to move. So that is the first page. It tells you this and that about your disposal method. Oh, actually, there's one more section here. Here is an image of the injection well plumes. So I've showed you these before, but again, you can see it's centered at Kalama Park and is about a mile wide. So um, that would be an area to avoid for swimming if you have something like a cut. Next, uh, we have plenty of data about the discharge. Here's just a pie chart showing, showing what goes to reuse and what goes to injection. But here are some very interesting charts that tell the history of, in this case, nutrient concentrations for the Kihei facility. You can see that nitrogen has been steadily increasing over time, while phosphorus has stayed about steady. And then if you look at the next chart, you can see that, that overall plant flow and injection are going down. So we have water that is becoming dirtier, but there's less of it. But the combination, it's getting dirtier faster than the flow is going down. So what we see in this chart is that the overall mass of nutrients discharged into the ocean is, well, the plant flow is increasing, injection is staying about the same, and then the mass of nutrients going to reuse is increasing. So these trends, according to Robin Knox, reflect successful efforts to conserve water while adding population. So while you add population and conserve, con conserve water, the nutrient concentrations in your water will go up. So that's what we're seeing here. Again, this uh, coliform chart shows 2016 and 2017 disinfecting and then going off the charts. And again, here's, you can see in 2017 at the cove when the indicator bacteria also went off the charts in correlation with the cessation of disinfection. So um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these tables, but basically we've taken water quality and flow data and I focus on nutrients and indicator bacteria and basically made some summaries about uh, the properties of the water that are going into the ocean. So I have here 20 years of data from underground injection control reports. So you can go back to any biannual period in the last 20 years and see what the nitrogen or phosphorus or flow was. So this table, just this page has a lot of data. Now we're gonna learn about the effects on the reefs. So again, this image of Ma'alaya total system collapse. Um, Land-based pollution is a contributor to reef degradation, shown here in Ma'alaya, and this links to that DLNR report that I'm referring to that shows a good summary of the decline. Also, Kihei has been called a ground zero for fibropapillomatosis, which is basically a herpes virus that comes from the wastewater, and then they eat the limu that have the nitrogen from the wastewater in them, giving rise to these tumors. So it's really sad that, you know, this place that is the womb of humpback whales, we've got these turtles that are sick. Also red spot disease and fish ulcers are a global phenomenon that are linked to um, sewage. And there are many links in here if you want to learn more. And here's a just a kind of a flow chart that shows how pollutants lead to in in infectious disease by multiple pathways. Um, lesions, impaired immunity, change in water quality, change in ecological balance. So this wastewater should not be there. Even, even the coral itself can get sick. So disinfection in, in particular, but Wastewater in general is very bad for marine life. Here's another diagram that shows how sewage interacts with corals through several pathways, including many, many that interact to support pathogens. So this is definitely making marine life and people sick. Uh, now, this is my favorite part of the website. Um, I worked with a marine life photographer in Oahu named Kiyoki Stender. 
And he provided me with basically open access to his full library of Hawaii marine life. And there are 229 species in here. And you could spend hours looking at these. Um, I've uh, listed the English name, the scientific name, uh, the Hawaiian name, and then each one has a link to learn more about that species. So you could spend hours exploring this and there's just so much beauty in here. It was really fun to make this. So I hope you enjoy it. And finally on this uh, pollution effects page, I have a tabulation that compares every single disposal method on the island for different metrics, in this case, nutrients. And you can see that I believe the best nutrient uh, the lowest nutrient level comes from Lahaina Wastewater Recovery Facility, and the worst comes from the Milawai, uh, a condo in Ma'alaya. So there's a wide range of treatment levels. I also have a comparison of coliform, which is the indicator bacteria, and you can go through and find your disposal method and compare it to others and see how it fits. And finally, again, this list of pathogenic species that are found in infected wastewater. So the final section is to learn how you can take action. And I have many actions here. I'll just work my way through it. First is to sign a petition. I have several petitions listed on here that are related to water quality in Maui. Then I also have an entry where you can tell us your petition. So I want to put your petition in here. Uh, Contact Reef Power is right here to do that. Uh, another tool I put in here is a way to very easily contact all your elected representatives to give them a piece of your mind about what your vision is for wastewater. So all elected officials and um, DLNR and DOH directors are in here. So, you know, you can use this for any, any uh, issue that you have. It's just a, a central place where you can easily contact your representatives. Um, here's a, just a brief guide on ideas on how to reduce your water usage. Here is a very brief guide on sun, uh, sunscreen selection. It gives you a list of um, uh, ingredients that you want to avoid, and it suggests a few products that meet the moment. Um, here's a cool uh, uh, set of tools from uh, Wastewater Alternatives and in Innovations out of Oahu. They have this potty portal that can help educate you and connect you to funding to upgrade your cesspool. Uh, there's a tool to uh, identify a new home disposal method if you are upgrading. And then this other tool, which is an uh, education tool to learn about land-based pollution and water quality. So you could spend a lot of time um, exploring this. I also have several Maui projects listed here that you can contribute to, including the Sunshine Vetiver Project. Um, you can uh, contribute to the Ma'alaya Village Association to help them with their wastewater woes. Um, and you can donate to realize UV disinfection of uh, municipal injection well discharges in Kahului. So um, yeah, there are many projects in here listed that you can donate to. Uh, next, you can learn more about Reef Health. This, these are 12 organizations that have active projects supporting Reef Health. And um, if you click on any one of them and you can learn tons. Uh, there is a database of eco labels that you can look for on your cleaning products. And there's actually a database of labels and there's databases of products or pro yeah, products. So you can spend some time researching whether or not your cleaning products are compatible with downstream ecosystems and maybe find some new ones. Uh, we, we've got an email sign up and followed and finally just a, a link to follow our Instagram. So I've worked my way through the uh, system for Kihei, um, the, the, the latter sections are common between disposal methods. Let me check my time real quick, okay. Let's try a couple more. Let's do um, Napili Shores where I stayed in 1985 and look at Lahaina. Again, uh, 
The waters come from West Maui, go into your home and go and are conveyed to the treatment facility. In this case, it's about 50-50 to reuse an injection. And in this case, I'm using green arrows because in Lahaina, as I told you, it's being disinfected uh, using UV since 2015. So um, Lahaina is of all the municipal facilities far and away the highest performing and has the best disposal methods. Again, drinking water sources, your municipal disposal method is about 50-50, but with that experiment, effectively an experiment in April of 2020, we realized that when the visitors come back, the reuse doesn't change, the injection just goes up. So all of the visitor effluent I'm designating to injection wells. Um, and again, we have current and future reuse locations in, in Lahaina that you can explore. And I'll briefly touch on the data in Lahaina. Again, 50-50 to injection wells and reuse. And you can see the nutrient concentrations in Lahaina are pretty steady over time um, and have not getting, been getting better or worse uh, majorly in 20 years. But we do see that plant flow is going down significantly, both overall plant flow and injection, while reuse has been going up slightly. So what that means is the overall nutrient loading going into the ocean and reuse is coming down. So we've got steady nutrient concentrations, decreasing flows that lead to decreasing mass of nutrients flowing and being discharged. And again, you can see that in this coliform chart that it was not disinfected until 2012. They started chlorine disinfection and then 2015 started UV. So uh, again, we have tables with all sorts of data that you can spend a lot of time exploring. Um, and by the way, if you're kind of a wonk for water quality data, I have 20 years of underground injection control uh, reports available in this Google Drive link. So if you wanna go back and see this analyte or that analyte from 1999, the data is in there. So you, um, you can download it and do whatever you like with it. And the um, final sections, the effects on the reef and the actions are common between the disposal methods. So I'm just gonna briefly touch on the other disposal methods. So for Kalui, we'll put in mana foods because Paia, all the way to uh, Mama's Fish House, discharges at Kanaha Beach. All right. So similarly, the water comes from West Maui, goes to the treatment plant, but you see by the size of the arrow is that almost all of it is not disinfected and almost all of it, 90% uh, goes into the ocean into these near shore injection wells. So Kahului has a long way to go before it has full disinfection and the vision of 100% reuse. Um, again, the disposal method is 10% uh, reuse and 90% injection wells. And again, here's the plume. This is from a Limu map. It shows about a third of a kilometer that has high levels of N15 or nitrogen from wastewater in the Limu. I'll briefly touch on some of the data. Kahului has been doing a good job on its nutrient concentration, current concentrations. They've actually been coming down on the trend line over the years. Uh, while flow has been almost totally steady in the trend line. So what that gets is that the total mass of nutrients being discharged is going down over time. And finally, you can see when they stopped again disinfecting in 2018, since then, it has been off the charts for fecal coliform. And again, here is a summary of all the data that you can spend some time on. And that would be the, the summary for Kahului. Let's go to Pukalani. Uh, we'll look up Pukalani Superette. Everyone loves Puk Soup. So in Pukalani, the water comes from the rivers and streams of East Maui. 
into one of several uh, processing facilities, and then is conveyed to the Pukalani Hawaii Water Service. It's a private central wastewater uh, treatment facility. And they uh, employ flat plate membrane bioreactor filtration technology to treat to secondary standards. And almost all of it, 97% goes to the golf course in Pukalani, and only 3% goes to a leach field, and it's totally disinfected. So Pukalani really shows the way for the future, almost total reuse, maybe use an injection well in an emergency and totally disinfected. So kudos to Hawaii Water Service for their excellent facility. Again, we've got drinking water sources and the disposal method, 97% irrigation reuse, 3% leach field disposal. And we don't have a lot of data from Pukalani. We only have basically one data point. Uh, their total nitrogen concentration is 13.1 milligrams per liter. Um, TP is 0.35 milligrams per liter. But look at this, only 1,000 gallons per resident per year is being discharged into a le leach field. So almost no water is going anywhere except irrigation reuse in Pukalani. So now we'll go to Ma'alaya. I'm gonna put in the Mott Lion Mermaid because it has the coolest name. So again, the water comes from the four great waters of West Maui into the condo and basically directly into an injection well right next to the coast. So. Some of these, are, uh, these facilities are only doing basically primary treatment, which is taking out the solids. So it's basically akin to a septic tank. The solids aren't going into the ocean, but everything else is basically. Oh, sorry. Again, water sources. The injection mold plume, this is a very simple model that basically extends out from where the condos exist in Matlaya and 100% goes into near shore injection wells. Again, 100%, we just have a pie chart that's just totally red for Matlaya. Uh, there's about 88,000 gallons injected per day from the um, condos. That adds up to about 7,500 pounds of nutrients going into the ocean per year. Um, Fecal coliform counts are uh, sometimes above the detection limit for the test of 1600. But um, uh, as far as I know, there is no disinfection in Ma'alaya. So I'll touch on septic and cesspool really quick. Start with cesspool. So yeah, your cesspool is just going into the ground. Um, not even the solids are being removed. So even solids from your wastewater are going into the groundwater and that groundwater is eventually making its way into the Pacific Ocean. So cesspools are basically no treatment. It's just the water going into the ground. Um, sorry. And I have an infographic here. I'm not going to take time to go through it, but basically all of it goes into the ground and the total nitrogen and total phosphorus concentrations are up into as high as 90 and 20, according to a Hawaii DOH estimate. So it's very high in nutrients. The coliform cell counts are above 100,000 colony forming units per 100 milliliters. So cesspool is very biologically active. And finally, septic. And the basic difference between septic and cesspools is that septic has solids removal. So basically the tank settles out the solids and then the, the rest of the wastewater flows into a leach field, into groundwater, into the ocean. So again, very little treatment. 
So yeah, I've kind of skimmed over this. I know it's a little overwhelming. I kind of rushed through it, but there's just so much information here that you can spend time on. But I've worked my way through all the disposal methods and um, I encourage you to give me feedback on this because um, it's very new. And you, know, you may say, oh, I, wonder, I, I expected it to work this way. That's your creativity and I need that. So tell me how you expected it to work and um, we're gonna be working to develop it further in the next year. So really briefly, I know I'm kind of running out of time, but um, I wanna talk really quickly about solutions to some of these issues. The first is uh, related to stream limu. Now the stream limu were brought over with the original Hawaiians. It wasn't here before. So they're thinking the samples were like in the taro and it populated the taro patch and now is in our streams. So these things are really beautiful under the microscope. Most people think of ocean limu, but freshwater limu is a thing. And here's a picture from my microscope of our samples, Edegonium. And so we can use this stream limu in a new type of system called a turf scrubber. And a turf scrubber is basically a man-made stream bed. It provides the environment that the stream limu like to live in. And you, you uh, basically feed the limu the wastewater and they consume the pollutants, polishing the nutrients out of the wastewater. And these can be scaled up to several acres. So these are, this is a piece of the puzzle so that we can achieve 100% reuse in the long term. And these systems can grow uh, 50 to 100 tons of limu per year uh, for a two acre uh, installation. And that limu can be compo composted into basically potting soil that can be used in agriculture. Now we've cleaned up the water with limu. What do we do with it? And if we talk to the, the Hawaiians, the original Hawaiians, they grew these giant breadfruit forests for food security. Um, Lahaina is like a large house shaded by breadfruit trees is an old proverb. And in the South Kona coast on the big island, there is this feature on the landscape that goes many miles. And it's basically an ancient breadfruit forest. So these, the people were thinking about food security back then. Um, the establishment of the zone was a cultural decision within, envi within environmental constraints. So we're kind of in the same boat now. In fact, you can grow all sorts of uh, cool natives with this reuse water, including sweet potato, taro, bananas, uh, noni, kukui, kava, ipu, ohia luhua. So we can make just this beautiful native forest with the reuse water. Now, where I think it should go in Kahului is right along the airport and at the location where the old sugarcane plant used to discharge. So I think it would be great to have a 600 acre native food forest that is like the gateway to East Maui, this beautiful green forest by the airport. Um, a 2015 study commissioned by the county showed other areas with, where reuse could be applied, including Maui Lani Golf Course, Maui Community College, uh, some agricultural land. Um, so there are many options for, for areas for reuse. Um, similarly, in Kihei, 200 acres could make a beautiful breadfruit forest near the uh, Maui Nui Golf Course. You know, that landscape is so parched, but it, just like anywhere else, will come to life if we irrigate it. So these are just two different years of different rainfall. Now, there's a very exciting development. Uh, this is from the county, which is the South Maui R1 expansion, expansion project. And in cooperation with uh, Haleakala Ranch, they're going to put a 3 million gallon reservoir way up Malka so that we can then irrigate all this area with the water pressure. It's basically like a water tower in a small town, except it's on the hill. So once we free this up, we can irrigate this en entire area. And you know, they've even put cost estimates on it in the upper 20s, lower 30 million to zero out the injection wells in Kihei. Uh, there is this Keokea Riparian Corridor Rehabilitation Project conducted by the Central Maui Soil and Water Conservation District. Now this project on Haleakala Ranch land takes this really parched landscape and irrigates it. And this is buffalo grass growing just on the emitters. So this just shows that this landscape is just asking for water and 100% reuse really is the way out of this. And I won't spend a lot of time on this, but the list of uh, species that they plan on growing is basically dry land native Hawaiian species. 
Here's another project working toward 100% reuse, the Kihei R1 Disposal Proof of Concept by Ridge to Reefs and Sunshine Vetiver Solutions. Vetiver is this amazing plant that grows roots like way down into the ground and just locks the landscape into place. So it's really good for preventing sediment transport in a watershed. Here's a picture of their before, before they installed the vetiver, and this is after. And they're irrigating this at the rate of about 30,000 gallons per day. So if you took all of the reuse water going into injection wells in Kihei, you'd only need about 60 to 65 acres of vetiver to, to receive all that wastewater. Now for my native food agroforest, it's about a third of the watering rate. That's why I'm at about 200 acres. Now with the riparian restoration project, they may be irrigating at a much lower rate, so they need even more acreage. So there's a relationship between how, how much we irrigate per acre and how many acres you need to zero out the injection wells. And then finally is my project. Here's a, an overview of the blueprint. And I'm going to basically do an eighth acre food agroforest with all the species I showed you on the slide, breadfruit, taro, sweet potato, lay flowers. And um, it's going to be right next to the Kihei Wastewater Reclamation Facility. Uh, here's a little plan of my layout. Uh, we're doing three types of breadfruit, kukui, banana, noni, plumeria, ohia, and many ground covers. So again, these are some of the beautiful pictures. And finally, you know, we have these three projects working toward 100% reuse, but the landscape may tell us where these different applications of reuse water may be used. And you know, the vetiver is almost like a stitching of the Aina, where we have like gullies where sediment transport potential is high, we can plant the vetiver to actually lock in the landscape. And maybe the really favorable areas that are flat, you can put a breadfruit forest, and the rest of it is this riparian restoration program with the dryland varieties, which by the way, can support grazing of food animals. So this might be what a distribution of that landscape might look like. And finally, we can also do the same in Lahaina. This is 325 acres, uh, Malki, Malka, the, air, the old airport there. So I'm almost finished. Um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is a potential solution to both um, cesspools and also other problematic wastewater areas like Ma'alaya, which is this community scale wastewater reclamation system. And what it is, is basically like a, a neighborhood wastewater system. You don't need a big municipal facility and it is enabled by membrane bioreactor technology, similar to what's used in Pukulani. So these uh, systems can be basically trucked in and placed on a concrete pad and you have a wastewater facility. Then uh, with uh, UV disinfection and some polishing steps, you discharge the water into your food forest, which has vetiver uh, in rows to kind of lock in the landscape. And then you've got food going back to the community. So this is starting to look a lot like a closed ecological life support system, a modular treatment facility, irrigation reuse, and basically you're done with these clusters of cesspools. This can also be applied in Ma'alaya where we have, and this is just general technical information, I'm not representing the Ma'alaya Village Association in any way, but the some 600 condos can be attached to a similar system with MBR technology, polishing steps and irrigation reuse. And I did the, the calculation, five acres of a breadfruit forest can grow like 60,000 pounds of breadfruit for a year per year, just from the wastewater in Ma'alaya. So, we would be enhancing food security, both from plants and also by restoring the reef. So, and this is what that might look like. You've got conveyance along the road. This is just my personal sketch. Uh, here's an, uh, an eight acre green belt, just Malka Haole Street. And here is the treatment facility. And to bring it full circle, this community-based wastewater treatment program is what my little Fairview home in Indiana needs. So if we can figure it out here, maybe we can bring it there. And in closing, um, this is a representation. Those green areas are all we need to zero out the injection wells. I calculate about 1,150 acres to achieve 100% reuse in Maui. And in my closing slide, I have basically a cost breakdown 
to fix all these problems. And they're listed in uh, ascending order of cost and also in the order that I, I think that they should be executed. So first, Kahului disinfection has been quoted at 6 million by the county. A Ma'alaya Regional Wastewater Reclamation System, 9.55 million. 100% municipal reuse in Kihei. Uh, and I've done an independent estimate and it pretty much lines up with the counties at about 30 million. Uh, 36 million for 100% reuse in Lahaina, and almost 100 million for 94 in Kahului Wailuku for about 600 acres. And that lines up with the 2015 report on reuse. And finally, um, for the cesspools, we can use a combination of a, a connecting the cesspools that are in town to the municipal system. If we have clusters of cesspools, we can do this community based. Uh, system with the membrane bioreactor technology. And then the outliers, we can go ahead and replace with septic tanks. So 350 million, you know, if you're worth 10 billion, this is 0.3% of your wealth. So I'm challenging someone out there that can do this to just upgrade our county. Let's zero out these injection wells and, um, you know, go to 100% reuse. And I believe that's. Okay, so I have some closing slides here. Uh, my websites are flushaware.com and reefpowermaui.com. I'm on Instagram as flushaware reefpowermaui. And if you want to contact me and give feedback on the site, like I said, it just got released. Uh, contact me at info at reefpowermaui.com. And now for special thanks, uh, special thanks to Haleakala Ranch, who is both leasing me, my, my site from my reuse project, and also the other two reuse projects. So Haleakala Ranch is really supporting all of this, these works. Uh, Maui Nui Marine Resource Council, which is my fiscal sponsor, the County of Maui, who I'm working closely with on my reuse permit, uh, Born and Raised Earth, which is the grant organization funding this effort, and finally, the County Council of Maui, I have to thank Kelly King because this whole journey started when she invited me to testify for the injection wall hearings a few years ago, which led to me finding my grant organization and really all this work. So Kelly has been such a supporter and here's the contact information for the hearing on Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, regarding the disinfection bill. So with that, uh, we have a surprise which is that Kelly is here. So uh -huh. I hope I didn't fill your brain too much. I hope it wasn't confusing and now I'll hand it over. Okay, just real quickly, thank you for putting that agenda up. I just wanted to make a point that when we, because a lot of people don't understand that in the agenda, you're, you're gonna see the bill, but the bill is to, for referral to committee. So okay. we have the bill that I've been working um, with Travis on, which would require um, treatment at all um, of our wastewater treatment uh, facilities. And that will be on the agenda to be referred to the care committee. So it, it will be scheduled um, in the afternoon of March 16th in the care committee. That, that portion of the meeting will start at 1.30. And that and we'll go and that bill will be the first thing on the docket. So that will be also followed for those of you who follow the injection well case, we also will have um, an update of what the county is doing as far as applying for the NPDES permit that it needs to apply for everywhere it has these injection wells. So those two things will be the main thing in the afternoon on the agenda. And 1.30, if you wanna come in and testify and support the bill, 1.30 um, is the time to log on. And, and thank you so much, Travis and Maui Nui Marine Resource Council for you know, all the work that you're doing. And you know, it's, it's easy to support work when it's good work. So it's been my pleasure to be um, associated with your organization, with um, all the things that are happening in Ma'alaya and trying to clean up the, um, the reef over there. Uh, Travis, all your good work. And, uh, and also special shout out to everybody who supported the sunscreen chemical ban. Yeah. So we're just, we're moving great guns. We're moving ahead as fast as we can with these climate actions because it's urgent. We don't have a lot of time. And this is the thing that keeps me up late at night and gets me up at three o'clock in the morning just thinking about, you know, how as fast as we can move, we're not moving fast enough. So everybody out there who's listening, thank you for all your support for these types of projects. 
the um, I really believe this modular unit is the way to go forward. It's the it's the best protection we have to um, putting these units up around the island against something happening to our centralized units and then everybody going down. So I'm a big believer in distributed energy and distributed sewage treatment and as much distrib distribution as we can, and then keeping that that revenue there in the community. Thank you for um, allowing me to say a few words. Appreciate it, Jill and Amy and Anne and Meredith and Travis. Mahalo, mm -hmm. council member. We so appreciate you coming on. And Travis, what a wonderful presentation. Um, so much information and what a great resource to have so accessible. Um, I mean, I learned so much and I'm sure everyone else who attended learned a lot too. So. Um, we did put links to the bill um, in the chat, as well as a link about um, how to testify for the bill that was put in um, a little bit earlier, so we can maybe repost those links um, if possible. But we, um, we are running a little short on time, but I wanted to take some time to go through questions that might come in. So if you haven't asked a question yet and you have one, you can put it into the Q&A box um, or the chat and I will go through them as best as I can. We'll also try to save some of those questions um, also if you would like to reach out to Travis separately um, his information was, was on that previous slide as well. Um, I did have one question come into the Q&A box um, from Susan. So I'll go ahead and read her comment as well as her question. Um, where I live on the 2nd of August in 2020, um, issued after a rain event, the count for thermotolerant coliforms or fecal coliforms entering our coral lagoon was greater than 1 million CFU per 100 milliliters. This is not a rare event. Our reef is rapidly degrading. It is now diseased and dying. Nothing has been done since, despite my repeated lobbying. I'm feeling pretty helpless right now. Is your app adaptable to other places? And thank you for all of the information, which I will definitely investigate. Yes, is the short answer. And we have plans to actually make an app that you can download on your phone within the next year. And with the rollout of that app, we have a lot of work to do, but we're going to try to do this for all the Hawaiian islands. And so then when you log into FlushAware, you would choose your island and then choose your disposal method. So we have a lot of work to do, but that's our next goal. But can you tell me if you know anything about where she is from? Um, it didn't say in the comments. So Susan, if you're still online um, and could give us more context, you can, oh, Norfolk Island. There we go in the chat. Oh, not in Hawaii. Yes, the very long-term goal is to roll this out globally, of course, but you know, I'm just one person and I've only focused on Maui right now, but if it gets picked up and you know, who, who knows what sort of funding we could get to expand this. So I would really like to hone in on somewhere like Manhattan <laughs> and and just blow people's minds that yeah it's going into the river not you not not hard to figure out and look at their water quality there so yeah there are a lot of adventures coming for this effort great um a few more coming in here does the chlorine cause any residual issues when disinfecting can we somehow perform uv disinfection at the home level as well you know, I've looked into this and there is some work done on reuse at the home level. So basically having a septic tank or something like an adapted septic tank where you reuse it. The problem with that is the, the investment to get a system that does something like disinfection, it would be very high cost for a single household. So that's the benefit of this community scale modular system is you get a whole bunch of people in a neighborhood, then you only need one disinfection system. So, but you know, there are, I, I don't know a lot about it, but there are at home reuse systems that are in development out there, but I haven't found that one that is just like the, the perfect replacement for cesspools yet. But the modular system, the community scale wastewater system, that solves the problem of the high cost for the individual homeowner because it's collected, collected into the neighborhood. 
Great. And chlorine, let me talk about that for a second. Yeah, chlorine has fallen out of favor because of its effects on the reefs. So that's probably why they stopped using it in Kahului in 2018. But the problem is they didn't replace it with anything. So, but chlorine is not widely used in Maui anymore for disinfection. Right. Great. Thank you for answering that. Um, Mark had a comment. Um, I had no idea someone had compiled all this existing data. Um, you presented it. It's very, the way you present it is very easily digestible. Um, not only doing the science, but helping with policy solutions. He, said if I would add one thing is to add dry toilets as a disposal system. Hmm. Um, removing the water vector, you not only eliminate the energy and chemicals needed to treat your toilet water before it fills your tank and eliminate the high energy and chemicals needed after you flush. Um, as you point out, plants love the nutrients from our discharge so the breadfruit can get it directly from compost, eliminating all that energy and chemical treatment, even using R1 water and save 40,000 gallons of potable water an average per household per year. Wow. Um, he also said, feel free to pour tracer dye in my two-year compost pile to see where it goes or te for, test for pathogens, <laughs> heavy metals, pharmaceuticals. Lastly, dry toilets are by far cleaner than wet toilets, just FYI. Very cool. Lots of, lots of good info in there. Um, I'm double checking the chat as well. Um, council member, do you have a link for the March 16th meeting as well, or just um, Friday's meeting? No, that, uh, no the, the, um, the March 16th meeting hasn't been posted yet. So we post uh, six days ahead of time. Okay. So um, look for it around March 10th, it should be posted. But go to uh, mauicounty.us for all of the meetings. And then you, if you click on the big green box that says agendas on it, it will it'll have a list of all the upcoming meetings. And you can click on those, um, the different committees. And I'll post it on my social media accounts, Instagram, Flush Aware and Reef Power Maui. So that'll keep you in the loop too. Wonderful. And I saw Travis, you put your contact information in the chat. Um, it's info at Reef Power Maui, um, is it .com? Dot com, yes. Oh, perfect. So that's available. I am going to, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A box um, or in the chat. I haven't gotten any from Facebook Live. We are a little bit over time here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here. But Travis, thank you so much for your awesome presentation and council member for coming on and sharing more about your bill. Um, what an enlightening, enlightening evening. So thank you both so, uh, so much. I'm, I'm going to sign off now because I got to get back to my council meeting. It's been all day. Uh, thank you, Kelly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, to our audience, thank you so much for hanging in here with us um, a little bit later. Thank you for attending Maui Nui Marine Resource Council's Know Your Ocean Speaker Series, sponsored by the County of Maui Office of Climate Change, Resiliency, and Sustainability. Maui Nui Marine Resource Council is a nonprofit celebrating 14 years of working for clean ocean water, healthy coral reefs, and abundance of native fish for the islands of Maui Nui. Our next Know Your Ocean Speaker Series event will take place on Wednesday, April 6th at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Our speakers will be John Starmer and, and Cheryl King, who will be presenting on citizen science, community-based projects happening on Maui. To hear about signing up for this talk and to learn about other future presentations, please sign up for a free subscription to our monthly e-newsletter, Reef and Brief at MauiReefs.org. As you've probably heard, Maui County's ban on plastic disposable foodware began yesterday on March 1st, 2022. To help protect our oceans from plastic pollution, um, you can get a free Hui Zero stainless steel bento box for the use of your leftovers and takeout foods from your favorite eateries when you visit MauiReefs.org and donate $50. This Saturday, March 5th, treat yourself to a signature guided chocolate tasting at Maui Kuia Estate Chocolate on their rooftop Ocean View Pavilion, led by the company's founder and CEO, Gunners Valkers, to learn about their locally grown farm to bar cacao. 100% of the ticket price for this tour will benefit Maui Nui Marine Resource Council. Advanced reservations are required. 
To purchase your ticket, please visit MauiChocolateTour.com and click on Weekend Tastings. This month, new mineral sunscreen dispensers were installed at Ahihi Kina'u Natural Area Reserve and McKenna State Park. Only sunscreen made with mineral-based ingredients will be distributed through the dispensers. Mineral-based sunscreens block out both UVB and UVA rays from the sun and aren't harmful to marine life. The new dispensers were made possible through a partnership with the with the state of Hawaii, Ma County of Maui, and the Robert F. Orr Charitable Foundation, Maui Nui Marine Resource Council, and Raw Elements USA. When you donate to Maui Nui Marine Resource Council, you'll be supporting our work to improve the ocean water quality in Ma'alaya Bay. Our projects include our oyster bioremediation project, which has caged oysters in the bay, filtering sediment and other pollutants out of the water. We're also stabilizing the slopes of Pohakea watershed to prevent sediment runoff by planting vetiver grass, which Travis mentioned earlier. Um, it's a non-spreading, deep-rooted, drought and fire-resistant plant that keeps soils from washing into the ocean during rainstorms. So far, we've planted 2,300 vetiver plants. We're measuring the impacts of our work through ocean water quality monitoring and also monitoring runoff from the watershed at streams and erosional hotspots. You can also support the Hui Okavaiola Ocean Water Quality Monitoring Program by adopting your favorite beach for water quality testing. This community-based water quality monitoring program launched and conducted by Maui Nui Marine Resource Council, the Nature Conservancy, and West Maui Ridge Reefs Initiatives in partnership with the State of Hawaii Department of Health Clean Water Branch, tests ocean water quality every three weeks at 29 locations in South and West Maui. So that's 17 sampling sessions every year at all of our sites. We recently completed our 100th sampling session, as you may have seen um, in the news. If you've missed some or all of tonight's presentation, you'll be able to view it on Facebook Live on our Maui Nui Marine Resource Council Facebook page. And it will be also posted on our YouTube channel, Maui Reefs. Thanks to our good friend, Darla Palmer Ellingson, you'll be able to hear interviews with our presenters on her program, Island Environment 360 on H Hawaii media stations on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. And last but not least, we want to thank all of our sponsors and supporters who are making our work possible. And we also wish to thank individual donors like you. Mahalo for making a difference. Thank you all for joining us again and have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next month.